Hello, so today we're going to start to read our new class reader, which is called How to Train Your Dragon. And it says it's by Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III and translated from the Old Norse by Cressida Cowell. So let's start by having a look um, at the um, front cover. So if you look, at the front cover we can see it's been designed to look like a very old book so we've got some pretend damage here something that looks like something's clawed it here now looking at the title how to train your dragon we might think that this book is basically a set of instructions or an instruction book as to how to train a dragon but let's look at the blurb which is on the back to find out um, what type of text it is. About the author. Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III was a truly extraordinary Viking hero, warrior chieftain, awesome sword fighter, and amateur naturalist. He was known throughout Vikingdom as the Dragon Whisperer, on account of his power over these terrifying beasts. But it wasn't always like that. Then we've got some um, things from newspapers. So a classic, says the Viking Herald. How to Train Your Dragon is a must read for every hero who is having a little trouble being as heroic as he would like to be. And that was written by the Barbarian Librarian. Okay, so we can see that this is book is set out as if it's the style of a series of instructions as to how to train your dragon but maybe once we get inside the book we might see something different let's have a see so immediately as we open the page we've got a section that says about the author so how to train your dragon is the first volume of hiccup's memoirs He's better known for his great work of natural history, Viking dragons and their eggs, which lists every dragon known to man. He's also published two other non-fiction title, titles, Learning to Speak Dragonese and Mermaids and Other Monsters, and is a regular writer for the Big Dragon Monthly. About the translator. Cressida Cowell lives in London with her husband Simon, daughters Maisie and Clementine, and two cats, Lily and Baloo. As well as translating Hiccup's memoirs, she's also written and illustrated picture books, including Hiccup, the Viking who was seasick, Clayden was a clingy child, Little Bo Peep's library book, and Don't Do That Kitty Kilroy. So then we've got the title page and then we've got a page that introduces us to some of the characters. So if we have a look here, we've got a picture of Hiccup, we've got uh, Dog's Breath the Dobrain, we've got Clueless, we've got Fish Legs, we've got Snotlout, Warthog, Speedy Fist and Tough Nut Junior. And here we've got our contents page. So we've got a note from the author and then first Catch Your Dragon is our first chapter, taking us through to Hiccup the Useful, which is our last chapter, and an epilogue by the author. So without further ado, let's turn over the page. So here we've got a map of an island, the island of Burke, where the story takes place. Just going to give you some time just to have a look around this picture to see what you can spot on the map. Okay, so let's move on. A note from the author. There were dragons when I was a boy. There were great grim sky dragons that nestled on the cliff tops 
like gigantic, scary birds. Little brown, scuttly dragons that hunted down the mice and rats in well-organised packs. Preposterously huge sea dragons that were 20 times as big as the big blue whale and who killed for the fun of it. You'll have to take my word for it, for the dragons are disappearing so fast they may soon become extinct. Nobody knows what is happening. They're crawling back into the sea from whence they came, leaving not a bone, not a fang in the earth for the men of the future to remember them by. So in order that these amazing creatures should not be forgotten, I will try and tell this true story from my childhood. I was not the sort of boy who could train a dragon, and with the mere lifting of an eyebrow, I was not a natural at heroism business. I had to work at it. This is the story of becoming a hero the hard way. Chapter one. First, catch your dragon. Long ago, on the wild and windy Isle of Burke, a smallish Viking with a longish name stood up to his ankles in snow. Hiccup horrendous Haddock the Third, the hope and heir to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, had been feeling slightly sick ever since he woke up that morning. Ten boys, including Hiccup, were hoping to become full members of the tribe by passing the dragon initiation programme. They were standing on a bleak little beach at the bleakest spot on the whole bleak island. Heavy snow was falling. Pay attention, screamed Gobber the Belch, the soldier in charge of teaching initiation. This will be your first military operation and Hiccup will be commanding the team. Oh, not Hiccup, groaned Dog's Breath the Dove Brain. The most and most of the other boys. You can't put Hiccup in charge, sir. He's useless. Hiccup horrendous Haddock the Third, the hope and hair to the tribe of the hairy hooligans, wiped his nose miserably on his sleeve. He sank a little deeper into the snow. Anybody would be better than Hiccup, sneered Snotface Snotlout. Even fish legs would be better than Hiccup. Fish legs had a squint that made him as blind as a jellyfish and an allergy to reptiles. Silence! roared Gobber the Belch. The next boy to speak had his limpets for lunch for the next three weeks. There was absolute silence immediately. Limpets are a bit like worms and a bit like snot and a lot less tastier than either. Hiccup will be in charge and that's an order, screamed Gobber who didn't do noises quieter than screaming. He was a seven-foot giant, with a mad glint in his one working eye and a beard like exploding fireworks. Despite the freezing cold, he was wearing hairy shorts and a teeny-weeny deerskin vest that showed off his lobster-red skin and bulgy muscles. He was holding a flaming torch in one gigantic fist. Hiccup will be leading you, although he's admittedly completely useless because Hiccup is the son of the chief and that's the way things go with us Vikings. Where, where do you think you are? The Republic of Rome? Anyway, that is the least of your problems today. You're here to prove yourself as a Viking hero. And it is an ancient tradition of the hooligan tribe that you should... Gobber paused dramatically. First, catch your dragon. Oh, suffering scallops, thought Hiccup. Our dragons are what set us apart, bellowed Gobber. Lesser humans train hawks to hunt for them. Horses to carry them. It's only the Viking heroes who deign to tear, tame the wildest, most dangerous creatures on earth. Gobber, Gobber spat solemnly into the snow. 
There are three parts to the dragon initiation test. The first and most dangerous part is a test of your courage and skill and burglary. If you wish to enter the hairy hooligan tribe, you must first catch your dragon. And that is why, continued Gobber at full volume, I have brought you to this scenic spot. Take a look at Wild Dragon Cliff itself. The ten boys tipped their heads backwards. The cliff loomed dizzyingly high above them, black and sinister. In summer, you could barely even see the cliff as dragons of all shapes and sizes swarmed over it, snapping and biting and sending up a cacophony of noise that could be heard all over Burke. But in winter, the dragons were hibernating and the cliff fell silent except for the ominous low rumble of their snores. Hiccup could feel the vibrations through his sandals. Now, said Gobber, do you notice those four caves about halfway up the cliff, grouped roughly in the shape of a skull? The boys nodded. Inside the cave, that would be the right eye of the skull, is the dragon nursery, where there are, at this very moment, 3,000 young dragons having their last few weeks of winter sleep. Ooh, muttered the boys excitedly. Hiccup swallowed hard. He happened to know considerably more about dragons than anybody else there. Ever since he was a small boy, he'd been fascinated by the creatures. He'd spent hour after long hour dragon watching in secret. Dragon spotters were thought to be geeks and nerds, hence the need for secrecy. And what Hiccup had learnt about dragons told him that walking into a cave with 3,000 dragons in it was an act of madness. No one else seemed too concerned, however. In a few minutes, I want you to take one of these baskets and start climbing the cliff, commanded Gobber the Belch. Once you're at the cave entrance, you're on your own. I'm too large to squeeze my way into the tunnels that lead to the dragon nursery. You will enter the cave quietly. And that means you too, Warty Hog, unless you want to become the first spring meal for 3,000 hungry dragons. Ha, 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 ha. Gobba laughed heartily at his little joke, then continued. Dragons this size are normally fairly harmless to man, but in these numbers, they will set upon you like piranhas. There'd be nothing left of even a fatso like you, Warty Hag. Just a pile of bones. And your helmet. Ha, 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 ha. So you will walk quietly through the cave, and each boy will gently steal one sleeping dragon. Lift the dragon gently from the rock and place it in your basket. Any questions so far? Nobody had any questions. In the unlikely event that you do wake the dragons, and you'd have to be idiotically stupid to do so, run like th thunder to the entrance of the cave. Dragons do not like cold weather, and the snow will probably stop them in their tracks. Probably, thought Hiccup. Oh, well, that's reassuring. I suggest that you spend a little time choosing your dragon. It's important to get one the correct size. This will be the dragon that hunts fish for you and pulls down deer for you. You will catch the dragon that will carry you into battle later on, when you are much older and a warrior of the tribe. But nonetheless, you want an impressive animal so a rough guide would be, choose the biggest creature that will fit into your basket. Don't linger for it too long in there. Linger, thought Hiccup, in a cave full of 3,000 sleeping dragons. I need not tell you, Gobber continued cheerfully, that if you return to this spot without a dragon, it's hardly worth coming back at all. 
anyone who fails this task will be put into immediate exile. The hairy hooligan tribe has no use for failures. Only the strong can belong. Unhappily, Hiccup looked round at the distant horizon. Nothing but snow and sea, as far as the eye could see. Exile did not look too promising, either. Right, said Gobber bristly. Each boy take a basket and put their dragon in and we'll get going. The boys rushed to get their baskets, chattering happily and excitedly. I'm going to get one of those monstrous nightmare ones with all the extra extendable claws. They're really scary, boasted Snotlout. Oh, shut up, Snotlout. You can't, said Speedy Fist. Only Hiccup can have a monstrous nightmare. You have to be the son of a chief. Hiccup's father was Stoic the Vast, the fearsome chief of the hairy hooligan tribe. Hiccup, sneered Snotlout. If he's as useless at this as he is at the bashy ball, we'll be lucky if he even gets one of the basic browns. The basic brown was the most common type of dragon, a serviceable beast, but without much glamour. Shut up and get into line, you miserable tadpoles, yelled Gobber the Belch. The boys scrambled into their places, baskets on their backs, and stood to attention. Gobber walked along the line, lighting the torch that each boy held in front of him from the great flame flare in his hand. In half an hour's time, you will be a Viking warrior with your faithful serpent at your side. Viking dragons and their eggs. The common are garden and the basic brown. The common or garden and the basic brown are so similar they can be dealt with together. These are the most familiar breeds. The ones we instantly think of when we say dragons. They are poor hunters, but they are easy to train. These dragons are the best kind for family pets. Although, as with a lion or tiger, they should never be left unsupervised with very young children. Statistics, colours, green and yellow, all shades of brown, armed with basic teeth and claws, three. Defences, prickly spines, two. Radar, none. Poison, none. Hunting ability, lethargic hunters, three. Speed, swift in retreat, eight. Fear and fight factor, well, when angry, four. Or breakfasting with Woden in Valhalla with dragon's teeth in your bottom, screamed Grob Gobber with horrible enthusiasm. Death or glory, yelled Gobber. Death or glory, yelled the eight boys back at him fanatically. Death, thought Hiccup and fish legs sadly. Gobber paused dramatically with the horn to his lips. I think this could possibly be the far worst moment of my life. So far, thought Hiccup to himself, as he waited for the blast of the horn. And they, m and if they shout much louder, we're going to wake up those dragons before we even start. <coughs> Gobber blew the horn. And that's the end of the first chapter.